What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're going to be using a new tool in the beta version of Photoshop, and it allows us to expand photos. So if you've ever had a banner image where people's faces were getting cut off because it's cropped too tightly, then this video is definitely for you. So you might've run into this scenario where a person in your background image is getting cut off. So you can see I have the focal point like all the way up, but because this is such a wide and not very tall photo that was provided to me, and the header covers the banner section. So the you can see the top of her head is actually up here at the top of the window, but because I have such a big header, it's covering you know that whole top portion of the window. So the, the whole top of her head is cut off. So there's not really anything we can do about that. It's just the way that Squarespace functions that they overlay the header over the top of the banner image. So all we can do is try and make the banner image taller. And the beta version of Squarespace has generative fill and it also has generative expand. So if I go to the crop tool and you can see because I have the crop tool selected, we have this generative expand option. So I'm just gonna make the banner image taller and that way we have extra space above her head to where this is the area that the header will be covering and then ideally the part of the image where her face is won't be covered by the header anymore. So we're just gonna make this image taller. So now without inputting any command, cause I don't wanna try and tell it what to fill in, I want it to look at the image and then decide what should go back here. I'm gonna hit generate. It really doesn't take long at all, and it's freaking amazing. And here is the first option, so it just finished. So let me move this down so we can take a look. And it's using artificial intelligence to basically look at the image and try and think of what it thinks should be in that space. And it's creating pixels. It's pretty amazing. Number two looks really good, and then number three, Man, they all look really good. So it does give you variations over here. If you didn't like it, you could just generate more options, but I think all three of these actually look really good. I think I'm gonna go with number two. So now that I have that selected, I can just go ahead and file and export this as a JPEG. So I'll go ahead and export this and we'll see what it looks like in Squarespace. Okay, so I'm back in Squarespace and I'm going to add it as the background image. We'll just go ahead and upload that new version. And now look at how much extra room we have in the image. So I can actually shift up the focal point and we get her head all the way in frame. Now it's a pretty narrow banner, so I can't get like all of the laptop and all of her head in the frame. Um, it's just not possible. I can change the height a bit. Um, so we have a bit of a taller banner just for this page. And that way I can get more uh, of the full image in there. Maybe I'll just go something like this. So a pretty amazing new AI feature in Photoshop that's really gonna help us web designers who are receiving you know, less than ideal photos in terms of how cropped they are. We can now generate information essentially and fill out those photos. So if you have the Adobe subscription for Photoshop, definitely download beta and try this out. Hopefully it'll be coming to the regular version of Photoshop soon. So the explosion in AI tools over even just the past year has been pretty unbelievable. And I'm just genuinely curious where people stand in our little community. As a web designer, are you scared that AI is going to take over and we're not going to be needed in the next five years? Or are you of the mindset that AI is a tool that can help web designers and is only going to aid us in doing our jobs better? So please let me know where you stand on that issue in the comments below. Again, I'm just genuinely curious. And if you want to hear my thoughts on this subject and catch more Squarespace tips and tricks like this in the future, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.